I am beyond excited because the 16 gigabyte Mac mini M1 just came in the mail. How's it going y'all? It is Ben Aqua and maybe you've been following the whole saga of the eight gigabyte Mac mini M1. Long story short, I love the eight gigabyte Mac mini M1, but there were certain things like Bluetooth issues and monitor issues and this and that. A lot of people were like, you have a dud. You need to return that eight gigabyte model, get the 16 gigabyte model, Ben, what are you thinking trying to video edit with an eight gigabyte model? What's wrong with you, Ben? So anyway, I ended up ordering the 16 gigabyte Mac mini M1. I'm gonna be doing more in-depth testing and a proper review and some more content with the 16 gigabyte model. But in this video, I'm gonna be focusing more on unboxing this thing and the whole setup process so we can set it up together. So here we go, Mac mini M1, 16 gigabyte version. Let's see what's in the box. Here's the pleasing part. And here we go. This is the Mac mini M1 16 gigabyte edition. Of course, it looks completely identical to the eight gigabyte version. It's just such a beautiful and minimal design. The eight gigabyte and the 16 gigabyte version both have the same amount of ports and stuff. We have the two USB-A ports, headphone jack, the fan is right here, HDMI, two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, an ethernet jack, the power cable input, and then the power button. So pretty simple, looks fantastic. And then also in the box is some paper. And then we have a power cable. I love this power cable too. It just feels super substantial and nice quality. So I'm holding here the 16 gigabyte RAM Mac mini. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the eight gigabyte RAM Mac mini, which I have here mounted under my desk. And I've also been working on my cable management as some of y'all may notice. Um, I'm really trying to get everything just nice and kind of clumped down there cleanly. My goal is to have this really kind of minimal setup where the only things on my desk are this keyboard, the Logitech K380 Magic Trackpad 2, my LG 27 inch 4K monitor there. So once I get rid of that eight gigabyte model Mac mini over there, and I'll be returning that one and then using this 16 gigabyte model, hopefully, that will solve a lot of the issues that I've been having with Bluetooth and Final Cut Pro. I also feel more like a grown up today because I finally got an upgraded office chair, the Herman Miller Aeron chair. I was using this cheap $100 chair from Costco for a really long time, and I'm pretty sure I have a lot of back problems as a result of this chair. But a friend of mine, shout out to Dave for gifting me this Aeron chair. I'm so excited to finally have a chair that has ample back support. I like it a lot so far. I also have an autonomous Ergo Chair 2 on the way, so I'll probably be comparing this one to that Ergo Chair 2 when I get that. So the 8GB Mac Mini has been shut down, and I'm just going to take that same USB-C cable that I plugged in in that one, and I'm going to plug it into the 16GB Mac Mini, and I'm going to use the same power cable from the 8GB Mac Mini for the 16 gigabyte one. So that's plugged in. Let's power it on and see what happens. Ah, I love that sound. All right, come through 16 gigabyte Mac mini. So the first thing it's asking me to do is to plug in a trackpad. So I'm gonna plug the Magic Trackpad 2 into the back of this monitor just to get this whole setup started to pair a Bluetooth keyboard, turn it on and wait for your computer to connect to it. I really like this Logitech K380 keyboard, except you can only use this keyboard as a wireless keyboard. It doesn't have, you know, like a USB output or anything. I really like this keyboard. I like how kind of like quiet it is to type. The Magic Keyboard is definitely a lot louder, but I do like that the Magic Keyboard, the design perfectly matches the Magic Trackpad 2, so I might end up getting another Magic Keyboard for my studio setup. So I'm just gonna plug this Magic Keyboard in. I am in the United States, as it can already tell. I'm not gonna use Migration Assistant because I want to set this Mac Mini up as a fresh install. So it looks like iCloud is getting set up now. Choose your look. I am definitely gonna choose Dark Mode. I really, really like Dark Mode. And check it out, we have the Mac mini M1 16 gigabyte version loaded up here. So I'm just gonna open up a bunch of apps. This is what I did with the previous Mac mini. I'm just gonna keep opening up everything because it's so impressive just how fast almost every app 
opens. Like I just opened everything, you know, it's going crazy trying to load a bunch of stuff at the same time. But as you can see, like every app is opened and everything opened almost instantly on the 16 gigabyte Mac mini M1. So first of all, I'm gonna set up a different wallpaper. Let's switch it over to something just to see what it looks like. And I'm already noticing, it's a little hard to tell in this video, but the colors do look washed out on the LG screen. There's something about this monitor, and I've even heard other people in the comments talking about other monitors when you use USB-C with the Mac Mini M1, that the colors will sometimes look kind of washed out. So these do look washed out with this new install. And usually what I do is I will just restart the computer. So I restarted the computer and it looks like the colors are still kind of washed out. This is kind of disappointing. But what's nice is when I restarted the computer, it restarted pretty quickly. It only really took maybe like 10 seconds or something. Some people are saying the fix for the kind of washed out look on this monitor is to go into display settings and make sure high dynamic range is unchecked and it is unchecked. So yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that the colors still look washed out and gray to me, but the workaround for that, which is a little bit annoying, but it works is to use an HDMI um, to HDMI cable to connect the Mac mini to the monitor. So I disconnected the USB-C port from the Mac mini and now I'm gonna go into the back of the monitor and plug in this HDMI cable. Wow, that's dark, but hopefully this will fix that issue. Yeah, colors look nice and vivid. You can definitely see a difference. Like that doesn't look gray anymore. That looks nice and black and the colors don't look washed out. I mean, it looks so much better using HDMI. The mouse is moving around just fine really minimal lag, which is nice. So I restarted the 16 gigabyte version and what do you know, all of a sudden it works now. So check out the colors. This is with USB-C and you can see how much better, you know, that area looks. The colors look nice and vibrant. So that seems more like some kind of software issue, something about this monitor and Big Sur 11.1. So minus this monitor issue, everything is opening really, really fast and I'm very, very impressed with the speed. Would I say that it's opening stuff faster than the eight gigabyte version? Not really. I mean, it seems just as fast. I think I'll see more of these speed differences when I'm doing more intense kind of editing, you know, like video editing or music editing. I will also be testing out Ableton Live on the 16 gigabyte Mac mini M1. Ableton Live, even with eight gigabytes worked totally fine. I didn't notice any audio dropouts with that. The audio dropouts I noticed were more with Final Cut Pro. And some of y'all were also talking about Bluetooth issues and how I should keep the Mac mini M1 on top of the desk so there's less interference between the peripherals. I'll be doing some testing with the 16 gigabyte version on top of my desk and also in this little enclosure here under the desk to see if the Bluetooth issues are still there, if at all. I haven't really noticed any Bluetooth issues so far using the Magic Keyboard, Magic Trackpad 2, but I will definitely be reporting to y'all again with some updates coming up, so be sure to subscribe below. So first impressions of the Mac Mini M1 16 gigabyte RAM version. I am really impressed with how fast it is. Does it feel insanely fast, like much faster, noticeably faster than the eight gigabyte model? Not really, honestly, it feels insanely fast though. And the big thing for me is going to be if Final Cut Pro works, because most of the reason I got the M1 Mac in general was to use it kind of as this beast mode, pretty inexpensive computer desktop machine for my studio so that I can edit videos and photos and music. I'll also be testing those things out, especially Final Cut Pro giving you an update if the 16 gigabyte version really did fix those RAM leakage, whatever kind of issues that I was having before. So down below in the comments, let me know what you would like to see me test on the 16 gigabyte RAM version of this Mac mini M1. I am going to be returning, unfortunately, that eight gigabyte version because I'm pretty sure that thing had like an evil hex on it. It just seemed like, you know, a Ouija board could be moved around that would just say, get 16 gigabyte RAM, you fool. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe and smash that like button. And one more thing, since you made it to the end of the video, I commend you and here's just a little secret. This entire video was edited on the Mac mini M1 with 16 gigabytes in Final Cut Pro and there were no audio dropout issues. Thank you. Apple, thank you. We'll see you in the next video.